What's going on, smart people? Today, our professor announced a quiz that we will be having in quantum mechanics on Monday. And I thought that for today's video, I'd go over what this quiz is going to cover. That way, we're all on the same page of what I'm learning in this quantum class and what we're expected to be able to answer questions on, what's examinable material. There's actually a good amount of stuff that this quiz can cover. The first thing is the quantum harmonic oscillator, which you might be familiar with. With this harmonic oscillator, it's not that there's a hard way and an easy way, it's just that there's an elegant way and a very tedious way. So in class, the, we went over the elegant way, which is solving it in terms of these things called raising and lowering operators, which are responsible for raising your ground state up to different excited states or bringing it back down. And it's really easy to solve uh, the system or solve for the, for the wave function that way. And then for homework, we had to do it the tedious way, which is actually solving the differential equation for what it is, and then solving explicitly for the Hermite polynomials and all that good stuff. For the homework also, we had to prove certain commutator relations for the raising and lowering operators, uh, but not just like what is A, a dagger, but what is the number operator A to the N, like something like that, something where you have arbitrary powers which was actually really easy because we proved these kinds of commutator relations in a previous homework, so we just got to apply it. We also had to do various things like proving different expressions for Hermite polynomials are actually equivalent, which I did using induction, but so we've done all of this stuff. The harmonic oscillator is the dead horse. We definitely beat it, and we're still beating it, and I'm, that's definitely going to be on the quiz. The next topic is the time evolution operator. So if you were to give me some initial state in the Hamiltonian, applying the time evolution operator to the initial state will tell you what the state will be at some later time. Uh, how complicated this time evolution operator is depends on how complicated your Hamiltonian is, because you end up exponentiating the Hamiltonian, some other complicated stuff that I don't want to get into. But this actually leads into the final topic that will be covered, which are the different pictures of quantum mechanics, namely the Schrodinger picture, the Heisenberg, and the Dirac picture. In the Schrodinger picture, the states are time dependent, so they evolve with time, and the operators do not. The states just obey the Schrodinger equation. For the Heisenberg picture, actually, Papa Flamy says it's not Heisenberg, it's he Heisen, Heisenberg, Heisenberg. Hefeweizen. Whatever. In the Heisenberg picture, it is the operators that are time dependent, the observables, and they obey the Heisenberg equation. You might have seen something similar if you've considered the time derivative of the expectation value of the operator, which just leads you to Ehrenfest's theorem. The final picture is the Dirac slash interaction picture, which I think is a bit more complicated because it's kind of like a combination of both. You basically split the Hamiltonian into a time-independent part and kind of like a perturbative time-dependent Hamiltonian, and this allows you to have time-dependent states and time-dependent operators. Now all of these three pictures are equivalent. You can derive the same equations of motion for the expectation value of the operator in all three pictures for either a pure or a mixed state. And I feel pretty comfortable applying the three different pictures to problems. If there are any problems on the quiz that are like, solve the problem using this picture, I feel pretty confident that I can solve those kinds of problems. The ones that I need to prepare better for, because I, I, it's one of my weak points with this, is understanding why one would use a certain picture over the other. So if I'm given a problem and it says, which picture should you use, the Heisenberg or the Schrodinger picture, to solve this kind of problem? That's what I think I need to review more before the quiz. Other than the whole, oh, this is time dependent, whereas in this picture it's not. Like, that I understand. But given the physics, which picture should I use, I'm not too crystal clear on yet. But that is what the quiz is on. Do you think it sounds easy peasy, or do you think it sounds hard peasy? Let me know in the comments, and I'll see you guys there. And I'll see you tomorrow. Stay classy. Chase your dreams and always remember to